Mr. Woody, you are here today desperate to learn if you are the biological father of the defendant's son. You were initially convinced he's yours, and you even gave him your name. Yes, Your Honor. Michael Woody Jr. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Wilson, you confess you slept with another man at the time of conception, though you honestly can't be sure who fathered your child, We're hoping today's results will give you that answer. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Woody. Yes. You were at a crossroads. You've fallen in love with the baby, yes. even though you really don't know if he's your biological child. Yes, Your Honor. Please, explain to the court. Well, I have a three-year-old daughter already, so when I found out I was having a son, I was excited because what man doesn't want to have a junior, you know? So I got plans made, you know, I'm ready to go play baseball and basketball with them and, you know, all the stuff a father's supposed to do with a son. So I'm, I'm just ready, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to be a, a father to a boy now. You so know. you're already having the visions of they, they everything you're going to do. Baseball, they, basketball, every, first haircut. Everything. You got it in your mind. You no love haircut. this baby. No haircut. No haircut? Oh, no haircut? No haircut. Yeah. Oh, let me see how long yours is. All right, yeah, that would be a no haircut. Um, so you love the baby. Yes. Yes. I thought, I thought that was it, you know? But come to find out, you know, I have my doubts about if he's mine or not. Because... You and Ms. Wilson are not in a relationship. You know that there is a strong possibility... Yes. ...that this child could be someone else's. Yes. And you're worried that yeah. this baby that you now love won't be in your life. Exactly. We understand the stakes are high. It's easy to fall in love with a child. And no person that has fallen in love with a child wants to see that child leave their life. We understand that. <laughs> Ms. Wilson, you two have concerns? Yes. Talk to me a little bit about the circumstances that got you all here today. When I met Mr. Woody, I was walking down the street with my friend. We were drunk, and we were going up to the store. And he was in the apartment complex, holding, you know, with his daughter in a stroller, and he said, you're cute. And I was like, oh, you're cute, too. So he walked to the store. And we walked back to my friend's house. We had intercourse. Okay. <laughs> so, I have to ask you this. Was he the only man you were intimate with during that time? No, Your Honor. Okay. So, respectfully, how many other men were there? Just one. Okay. So... Mr. Woody, that, of course, substantiates the doubt you feel. Yes. Because Ms. Wilson is honest. Yes. I, I wasn't just intimate with you. How did you find out she was pregnant? She sent me a message on Facebook, Your Honor. Facebook. She okay. Could, I, I guess she couldn't find me, so she sent me a no, message on no, Facebook. It, no, 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 okay. no. How it happened? It's not because I couldn't find her. It's because he left. Uh-oh. Pardon let's, me. Let's, I'm sorry. Let's get courtroom I apologize. language. Tell me, though. Well, I actually found out I was pregnant. I kept taking pregnancy tests, Your Honor, and they all kept coming back negative. So I went to my doctor, and um, I got a blood test. And a week after that, she called me while I was cooking dinner, and she's like, Miss Wilson, I just want to let you know that your pregnancy test came back positive. And so I was like, just my whole world just took a standstill, because I wasn't, I wasn't ready to have a child at all. I sent a message, and I just said that I was pregnant, basically. And did he respond right away? No. Mr. Woody? The girl that I was dating was responding to the messages that she was sending me. Jerome, let me see that. What, what evidence is this you're presenting? Um, I have a couple of pieces of evidence and I got the picture of me and my son and I have the picture, I have the messages from Facebook. So this is a message from Davina Wilson. I'm pregnant. So I hope you know we're getting a DNA test when the baby's born and I'm hitting you up with this child support. I'll see you in court. That's red. That, that's your first... You're Hello. gonna be a father? Hello. Way harsh, Miss Wilson. What, what did you think? I didn't know anything of it until a few days later, until after my birthday, when I tried to go home to my girlfriend and she's like, 
look at your Facebook. You got somebody pregnant right now. And I'm like, shut up. No, I don't. And she's like, yeah, you do. Now, do you believe it was his girlfriend answering you back, or do you think it was him? Honestly, I don't think it was his girlfriend. Your Honor, if you could read the text message, if you could read the messages, that is clearly a grown woman speaking in that. Uh, that is not no man speaking in them messages. Too many words, right? Way too many. <laughs> so, Ms. Wilson, when you get a message back, what does the message say? The first message I got back was, I think he said, the B word, you're lying or something like that. And I, I honestly thought it was him. And so, when I got that message, Your Honor, I'm like, okay. So, I, I basically went off. Like, you know, I, all I want is your money. Point blank, period. So you wanna you wanna leave me in the cold? You wanna you know let me get pregnant and do this by myself? Then you gonna pay me some type of child support? You gonna help me take care of my your child? If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So now, was that your last communication with her, or did she reach out to you again? I actually I came back to Vacaville and. I ran into her, you know, because I knew it was a possibility that, you know, the baby was mine, but I know I wasn't the only one, but I know I played a part in making this baby. So, <laughs> I didn't want to leave her stuck. I wasn't going to leave her, you know, to raise no child on her own. So, Ms. Wilson, you say there's another guy. Did you also send a message to him? No. <laughs> so, you never told the other guy you were pregnant? No. So why you why did you just single out Mr. Woody because if there was another guy? While, while I was sleeping with Mr. Woody, I you know I had sex with my boyfriend and everything. He was the last person I initially had intercourse with. So the last time I had intercourse, it was with Mr. Woody. Okay, but you do know that it doesn't matter who's first and who's last. It's about the window of conception, right? <laughs> were were they both in the window of conception? Yes, Your Honor. So, what happened when the baby was born? Like, throughout the pregnancy, were you, were you present? Did you go to any doctor's appointments with her? I came back, and, you know, I went to the 3D ultrasound pictures with her, and I was there, and then he was born. I was there. You, know? you were there when he was born? I was there. I cut the umbilical cord and everything, you know, so... And then tell me about the birth. Oh, was man. it a bonding experience for you both? It was. It was very painful because he died at birth, so... We had to sit there and watch my son just be lifeless. And it hurts, you know, just to even watch that for anybody, whether you know the child or not. And know. so for what you're saying is for a few moments. Five minutes, about five minutes. I had to bring him back. They and, were and they brought him back. Brought him back. He oh, that's amazing. <laughs> a miracle, a miracle. So I'm sure as you all were there together, witnessing literally a miracle happen, your Honor, I was actually surprised he came. I was just in the hospital by myself. You know, I was being induced, and I'm just trying to figure out, okay, who's gonna come, you know, what, help me watch my son be born, and then nobody came. And then he came, I think, when I started having my contractions. When it's time to sign the birth certificate, do you sign? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. With pride, yes. My first son is gonna be a junior. There's no other, hey, no. He's a junior. He has to have all of me. When does the doubt set back in? Okay, so her sister, you know, I'm at, I'm at one of my friend's uh, wakes. You know, he had just passed away. So, mm -hmm. you know, we at the wake or whatever. And I see her sister, I'm good friends with her uh, son's father. So, you know, we start talking and whoop, whoop, and uh, she comes up to me like, Mike, you, or, you need to, I think you should go get a DNA test, you know? Your Honor, that is a lie. That's, that's not how it happened. She didn't just come up to him and say, Mike, I mean, Mr. Woody, you need to get a DNA test, no. So the truth is, after this amazing, miraculous birth, you knew in your mind you still needed to get a DNA test. And even, even right, before Honor. that, before that, I uh, seen her stand in the apartment complex with two dudes. So, you know, they all go their separate ways. So the dude come back, one of the dudes come back by itself. So I stop him like, hey, bruh, you feel me? Is she pregnant? And he like, yeah, by my brother. Whoa. So that's another reason why I feel the way that I feel because ain't no, 
I'm not finna claim no kids that ain't mine. So I don't think anybody else is neither. After that happened, that's when he went MIA. So after you heard from this guy coming down the street, you just backed off. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster. Yeah. Meaning, one day you think you're the father, the next day you don't know if you're the father. Exactly. Then you back in town thinking you're the father, then the guy comes down the street and says you're not the father. Then you disappear, you think you're not the father. Then you come back to the hospital, to now you're the father. father to be the father. And you sign the birth certificate. Now you leave the hospital and the doubt starts setting in. Yes. Again. Yes. Are people talking to you? Are they in your ear? Or are you just looking at the baby and feeling like this baby doesn't look like me? Or is Miss Wilson saying to you, you know we got to get the DNA test? What happened? Well, she's always said that to me out the gate. She's always said, we need a DNA test. We're going to get it. She's said that to me out the gate. So that wasn't anything new to me. But then she also told me out of her own mouth that her, some, her friends or her family is saying that my son looked like her ex-boyfriend. Oh. oh. You know, but that's even more of a reason, like... And you submitted pictures to the court. Yes, Your Honor. That's you on the left side and Michael Jr. on the right. Yes. And when you look at the baby, you see yourself in him? I do see some similarities. I do. I do. How about you, Ms. Wilson? Do you see similarities? I don't really know who he looks like. To be honest with you. He looked like her, if you ask me. He looked... I definitely see the resemblance. He looked like her. Miss Wilson. It's hard for me to find myself in there. Do you think your son also has a resemblance to your ex? Um... No. <laughs> you don't see much? No. No. Well, this is complicated. Matters of the heart, Mr. Woody, it's a special thing. And a beautiful baby like that... She here. It's easy to fall in love, yeah. to be attached, and want to be there for that child in the right way. And you've done that. And, you know... <laughs> and, look, what are your hopes? I hope that he's mine. I do. I want him to be mine. I want him. Yeah. I want him. Who doesn't... Who wouldn't want him? Look at him. Who, who wouldn't want him? I want him. I take care of mine as much as I can. You know, I don't have the, all the money in the world, but I'm always there for my daughter, so he's gonna get the same love that she has. Period. And what are your hopes, Miss Wilson? I just want my son to have a father. I know. <laughs> It's important to you, right? It really is. <laughs> I mean, I can't teach my son how to be a man. So... I will. <laughs> I will. He loves him so much. He does. He gets all... When he cries with me, I'll call Mr. Woody, and instantly, when he hears his voice, he stops. My boy. It's my boy. And do you call Mr. Woody his dad? Your daddy? Yes. You send me a picture about every day, you know, new outfit, and it's like he's mine. And I, I, I just, I really, I need to know, you know, the truth if he's really mine so I can get all these other nobodies out of my mind and I can raise my son correctly the right way. Well, I think we've come to the point where it's just time to have the results. Yeah. Jerome, the envelope, please. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Woody v. Wilson, when it comes to two-month-old Michael Woody Jr. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. When it comes to two-month-old Michael Woody Jr. Mr. Woody,
You are not his father. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jerome, will you please have her sit down? Ma'am, come here. Ma'am, come up here. Come up here and sit down. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, sit down. Let's sit down. to know. You want to sit down? Okay. We're going to have some resources for you. We're going to help you just talk through this. I know this is not what you wanted to hear, but I'm sorry. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> he not no his father. Shit. He looks just like him. He looks just like him. We say in the courtroom all the time, it takes DNA to be a father, but it takes love to be a daddy. You've been that. You've been that. You can continue to be that if that's what you want. That's my son, man. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. What am I supposed to do? It's gonna be okay. That's my son, man. It's gonna be okay. Don't stop doing Honey. what you're doing for him. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna help you work through it, okay? Man. He deserves a man in his life like you, okay? Yep. He, that's what he deserves. Okay. Ms. Christian, you opened your case hoping the court will grant you a paternity test so you can prove to the defendant that he is your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. You claim that up until recently, you were told that Mr. Christian is your father and you need the test to gain closure. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Christian, you say there is no need for a DNA test because you know you are not the plaintiff's father. You testify that no matter what the plaintiff has been told, you know the truth. You are not her dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So this court must listen to all of the testimony to determine whether or not there is enough evidence to order a paternity test. I'll start with you, Ms. Christian. Why should the court grant this DNA test? Well, first of all, Your Honor, I have his last name. So how can I not be his child if I still have his last name? Tell the court how this has impacted your life, Ms. Christian. I mean, I just, I feel alone. I don't, I don't have any dad side of the family. I never had a father in my life. How can you say you're not my father when you've been in and out of my life since I was little and I still carry your last name? I don't get that. And so you've had to bear the burden of this paternity issue. Yes. And I've been the only one willing to step up and find out the truth and be the mature person in this situation. Mr. Christian. Yes, Your Honor. To hear this beautiful young woman describe so painfully what she's gone through, you truly don't believe she's your biological child? No, Your Honor. So why is that? Well... She says you've been in and out. She remembers you. But you never really committed to the father-daughter relationship. Why? Well, her mother and I had a lifestyle that we lived that was uh, kind of contrary. Um, I was in the streets. We were both in the streets. But... And why does that make you emotional, sir? Because me and her mother were like Bonnie and Clyde. We were doing what we did together, whether it was right or whether it was wrong. And when she got pregnant for the first time, I signed up for that child, not knowing if that child was mine. When she got pregnant for Precious, I told myself I wasn't going to sign up again unless I knew the facts, unless I knew it to be true. Well, how convenient. His mother right. claims me. No, this whole right. family no, claims me. I don't know this woman. She only been in his life for three years. I'm 26 years old. What can you say about this situation? I'm the innocent person in this situation. That's you right. want to sit there and cry and you a grown man and I've been going through all this? I'm an innocent person. Calm I got down. a baby on the way. Calm down. I need to know who my family is. You're right. You're right. Calm down.
precious, I just want you to take a breath because I know, I know... Calm down. ...how upset you are. You brought your aunt here to support you. Ma'am, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. And so, as we listen to this unfold, you were around during the time when Precious's mom, Miss Christian's mom, was dating Mr. Christian? Yes, Your Honor. I introduced them. You did? Yes, I was going with one of his family members. I introduced them. And first of all, he was claiming her, taking care of her, doing stuff for her. So you, now you're not claiming her because you got a new wife? So hold on, Thank you're you. saying that when Precious, when Miss Christian was born, Mr. Christian was taking care of her like she was his child? Exactly. Accepting what I'm saying, her? Basically yes. like a deadbeat father. Like, I'm your father, but I'm just not in... I'm just in and out your mm -hmm. life. Your Honor, I had to look for him when I was seven. I had to find him because I don't have my mom's last name. I have his last name. So if I'm not yours, why do I have your last name? Why do you keep being in and out of my life? So what happened when you went to search for your father? I call, I asked my grandma what his mother's name was, and my grandmother told me her name. I looked for her in the phone book because I was old enough to see other kids having father figures in their life, and I knew that's what I wanted in my life, and I called her, and she said she didn't know his whereabouts. So at seven years old... At seven years old... You knew what you were missing, and you said, I'm going to look in the phone book for my father. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Mm. I have always... Because I know a lot. I know too much. And I have always... I kept stuff from her. I didn't want her to know stuff. It was stuff that... Because I'm auntie, so I protected her from all that. But I knew, where, I knew where he was at. He was out there busy doing other things. So he, he didn't have no time for no kids. I was living with his mother when I went back yes. to try to get my high school diploma. Exactly. And this yeah. is why... This and is the main reason why I'm here hush. now. Not, you because, they, do with this. because they kicked me out a mouth. week before Christmas. You can't tell her to close her mouth. And yes, she I does can. need to shut up. I can't tell her to she close her mouth. She does need to shut up. Let's get her. some order. Mr. Christian, do you have any memories with Precious as she was growing up? Well, I have problems with my memory right now um, because of my past history... I think I've suppressed a lot of memories, but I do remember times where her mother would call me and I would come try to bond with her, but I never felt a connection or a bond, even in those attempts to try to connect with Precious. Um, another time, she called me from her auntie's house where she was living at, saying that they had gotten into a fight and that she needed me to come and pick her up. I was hesitant to do it, but she said, let's go get her. And we went over there and we picked Precious up. And so I need to ask you, Mr. Christian, if you had the doubts, what made you go pick her up? Mm. I, myself, know who my father is, but I never was able to spend any time with him growing up, so I didn't want her to have to go through that type of stuff of not knowing who her father was or knowing who your father is and not being able to uh, get the support that you really? need from father. See, this could have happened when I was two years old, one year old, a few months old, and I would have accepted the fact that I don't know exactly. who my father is. Well, no way, I'm 26 years old. You should right. be and I don't addressing know where your I mother. From. You should be addressing your mother. Hold it's on. about you and my mother because you as well, a grown I'm here. man, you as, I'm a, here. Where's you your as mother? a responsible person, James, if you feel like I'm, I'm not yours, don't, don't keep here. coming in and out my life confusing me. I'm here. So, Need wait. Today. I need a blood test today. Well, you finna get one. So, hold on. Mr. Christian, were you on the birth certificate? No. Where are you paying child support for her? Yes, I was paying insurance and child support for her. Not that you I were. know of. I never heard well, of that. He was paying well, child support for you. But I don't see how you could pay child support for a child that you said you had a blood test for. Oh, let's bring that up. Okay. So, wait, there was a blood but test taken this at is, some this point? This is what was said, and my mom said it was faulty. He was supposed to come back and take another blood test, and he never came back. So, if there was a blood test, that wasn't me. It was faulty. Mr. Christian, what happened? You had a blood test already? I had took a blood test, uh, and the test came back. 99.8% that me and her mother didn't possess the proper gene in order to create precious. Wait, where did <laughs> right. you see those results? They sent it to me in the mail, and I wish I had kept it. That is shocking to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you. And that was when she was two <laughs> years old. Her she, mother has lied to her for all these years. You have to. You but have wait, to. wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. No, 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 no. Your Honor, he has no, to. Hold on. That is not why it's shocking. Mm-hmm. What's shocking is we do this every day in this court. And I have never seen a result read that someone is 99.8% not the father. Are you sure that's what you saw? I'm sure. Because what paternity <laughs> tests bad. usually measure is the probability of that's paternity. Right. Okay. So, that with that bad. said, I want to reach out to Dr. Michael Baird, who is the chief science officer at DNA Diagnostics, and I believe he's on the line. Dr. Baird, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Dr. Baird, we have a situation here that I have never heard of. The defendant is saying that he read in a result that he was 99.8% not the father of Miss Christian. Is this an accurate reading of a DNA result? It's one that I've never seen before, and, and I've been <laughs> at this for a long time. Typically, if the alleged father is not the biological father, the result will be an exclusion with a 0% probability paternity, oh. not a 99 point whatever percent that he's not. Oh. It would be that kind of percentage if he were, but an exclusion is absolute and it's a 0% probability mm. of paternity. Understood. Thank you so much, Dr. Baird. I know you're very busy. And we appreciate your help today. My pleasure. Anytime. So, Mr. Christian, after you've listened to mm-hmm. the doctor's testimony, mm-hmm. do you feel differently about what you potentially read? It's to my recollection. Um, with them canceling the child support and stuff like that for her, that they came to the same conclusion that I wasn't the father. So, at some point, the child support was canceled. You no longer were responsible for child Your support. Honor, it, was, after... it was canceled because his rights were terminated. Thank and you. I went to foster care. Oh, my God. So my... Oh, thank you. When I was 12. That's it. I understand now. That's right. This is difficult. I mean, you are a young woman who's grown up without the love, the commitment, and the consistent support of your father mm-hmm. and have had to live through so much. What are your hopes? If I order this paternity test, are you hoping I, I, that I Mr. Mean, Christian I, I is just, your biological father? The only reason father? I hope so because I have a relationship with his family. Mm. And I want my daughter to have that relationship with his family. I still want that relationship with his family. You want the relationship? I don't want my child to have to go through what I'm going through right now. I want to tell her who her grandfather is and who her family is. You are here to break a generational curse. For all of these reasons, this court is ordering you to both submit to DNA testing immediately upon leaving this courtroom, and we will return here to get the results. Are we clear? Yes, Yes, Your Your Honor. Honor. Court is adjourned. Please be seated. We are reconvening in the case of Christian versus Christian. I ordered both of you to submit to DNA testing because I found there was sufficient evidence to warrant so. It's been some time, Precious. Yes, Your Honor. Since our last meeting. Have you had a chance to think about what it means to be in this moment, finally, where you will get the truth? Relief? <laughs> no matter what the, what it says, I'm gonna be relieved. I'm gonna know. You hear this, Mr. Christian. Does it break your heart to hear it? Yes, ma- yes, Your Honor. But with that being said, I just want her to get the closure that she needs and I can get the closure that I need because this is taking a toll on me and my wife and my relationship with the five other kids that I have fathered and I'm fathering right now. Really? 
Are you serious, James? You and her, ugh, y'all disgust me. But when you hit that note about what happens in your family, hmm. Mr. Christian, I immediately felt something for her because I thought, we haven't found out yet if he is or isn't her biological father. Right. If he is, then this right. is your family. Right. Yeah. Jerome, let's get the results. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Christian versus Christian, when it comes to 26-year-old precious Christian, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Christian, you are not the father. Oh, we glad to. <laughs> Miss Matthews, just let it breathe. Cause she just give her a minute to process it. I know, but she she over there clapping. It ain't funny. I'll punch her right. No, 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 no. Calm down, cause I got. Some... Who who was clapping? She, she was clapping. She clapping and laughing like it's funny. I have not laughed. Oh, you clap. Christian. You clap, but you can get it. You clap. Because you over there downgrading somebody. You know what? You listen, know. listen, listen, oh, listen. Jerome, get her. Get her, Jerome. Miss Christian. You pregnant. You pregnant. Don't, you do pregnant. You pregnant. don't, it don't pregnant. matter. No precious. But Look at me. No, my child don't have, have to have nothing exactly. to do with it. We're here exactly. for you. Shh. We are here exactly. for you. And I know you're ready to get angry and fight. And you know what? Some days I sit up here, Miss Christian, I'm ready to fight for y'all. Mm. I'm mad. Because mm -hmm. you don't deserve it. And I have to ask you, do you know of any other possibilities. Yes, he can tell you. Family member. Mm -hmm. And this is a family member of yours. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Do you know how to reach that family member? I'll do whatever I have to. Thank you.